in Kano State, where the Kano Governorship Election Petition Tribunal has sacked Governor Abba Kabir Yusuf, declaring the All Progressives Congress candidate, Nasiru Gauna, as the winner of the March the 18th election. Mr. Yusuf, who contested on the platform of the new Nigeria People's Party, was declared the winner of the election by the Independent National Electoral Commission after the poll in March. The three-man panel, after hearing the petitions on or that the withdrawal of the certificate of return, which INEC presented to Governor Yusuf and directed a certificate of return to be issued to Mr. Gauna. The court deducted 165,663 votes from Mr. Yusuf's total as invalid votes, stating that the affected ballot papers were not stamped or signed and therefore declared invalid. The ruling comes about six months after the APC candidate considered defeat to Mr. Yusuf in the wake of INEC's presentation of the certificate of return to the NNPP candidate. Uh, prior to what uh, has happened, we, it, we, we, we inform our people that uh, injustice will be likely take place in this uh, court. And we are appealing to our team supporters and the populace of Kano State that we are not taking it for granted. We didn't accept this judgment. We are appealing, definitely appeal will judge it better ballot papers were not signed, stamped, and dated. And the law says it shall be signed, stamped, and dated. So all these three must be there. Not two, not one. All the three must be there. And the court, of course, accordingly deducted these uh, invalid votes from the votes of NNPP. After doing that, Nasir Yusuf Gauna was declared the winner of the election. We sank our lawyers for the tremendous job they have done. And uh, nothing, uh, we'll just wait for uh, the final judgment and uh, the final paper. And then after getting our final paper, then they will quit. And we are coming to do the special best thing we can do. And for further perspective on the court proceeding, I am being joined uh, by, on the news by a legal practitioner, Inibaya F. Young. Good to have you join us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So let me start by getting your thoughts and legal interpretation of this particular judgment. So the important point is that when a candidate is declared the winner of an election, the opposing candidate and political parties have the constitutional and statutory right to ventilate their grievances at the tribunal. And that is what the APC has did in this case by approaching the Kano Gubernatorial Election Tribunal to challenge the declaration of Mr. Yusuf of the NNPP. Now, I followed some aspect of the proceedings at the tribunal, and I know that the APC had anchored their petition on a very limited uh, issue, uh, which is basically to say that results of polling units, uh, results from certain polling units in the states were used by INEC to declare the candidate of the, uh, all the, the new Nigeria People's Party as the winner of the election. And that had those results been excluded, which they are contended were invalid, that the candidate of the APC should have won the election. Now, I do know that under the Electoral Act, ballot papers are ordinarily required to be stamped, to be dated by the returning officer, by the presiding officers. I also know that, as a matter of fact, uh, it is important that the even agents of political parties in the in the case of results are also required to even countersign results at polling units. Now, if it is now clear that INEC had relied on documents which were not certified or authenticated to make declaration, of course, they have the, the right to approach the tribunal to ventilate that. But what is important is that this is the court of first resort. Mm. The tribunal has given its opinion on the matter. I am certain that the, the governor of Kano and his party will go to the court of appeal and while that appeal is pending, whoever wins there, they will go to the Supreme Court, and the mm. Supreme Court will have the final seat. Because I know that so, there have been other cases. All right, so I was going to say that this particular, um, the, the APC based this case on, 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 three, uh, particular on three particular grounds, um, over voting, 
invalid votes, um, and as well as the, he, the, the Governor Yusuf's membership of the party as at the time of the party primary. They say it wasn't up to 30 days as stipulated. But I wanted to ask you, because of the invalid votes and the votes that were deducted, if, what's the difference between this particular judgment and the one we saw in, in Oshun State? Well, the difference is that, first and foremost, the issue of membership of a party is an intra-party affair. It is not to be litigated by a candidate of another political party or by another political party. And that has been consistent. I think that is the evolving position of the law over time, that once a political party has nominated a candidate, in fact, particularly on the question of membership, it does not concern another party. So I agree with the tribunal on that ground that the APC had no business questioning the membership of Yusuf, uh, whether he was properly mem a member of the NNPP or not, the, the, the New Nigeria People's Party. Now, regarding the issue of overvoting, it is quite uh, difficult to prove overvoting, really. Because if you are alleging overvoting, what the Supreme Court said in Oshun's case is that you may have to even tender the beaver machine itself. Another aspect of the judgment tends to suggest that you may not necessarily have to tender the beaver. But you must speak to the beaver in the sense that you must have inspected the beaver itself. So it is not enough to just bring reports, beaver's reports, to show the number of accreditations as opposed to number of votes declared or cast. You must go further to say that you have examined the beavers. This is what you found. Now, that is very difficult to do because how do you even assess the beavers, really? How do you assess the beavers? So in the case of Oshun, because INEC was the one that said there was no overvoting, and INEC is the party that had beavers in its possession, that is why it was very easy for INEC to now bring the beavers itself to say that on the basis of the beavers which they have inspected, the alias the document given to the, 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 the petitioner was not exhaustive because there were more accreditation than what was reflected in the earlier number of accreditation that was certified to them. And that is because mm -hmm. they had to go through the beavers itself to be able to determine that. It is actually difficult for other petitioners to be able to do that. And we saw that in the presidential election petition where efforts were made to inspect beavers, and INEC simply stood wall on that. And, that apply, and, and you see, what INEC does is that mm. in any state or in any election where they have made a declaration, they will always de defend whoever the winner is. It doesn't matter whether it is... Uh, isn't, whether that it isn't that because they are usually joined? Isn't that because they are usually joined in the suit? But, you know, I'm, I'm afraid we do have to leave it there. And we'll await response um, from, the, from the Kano State Governor and his legal team. Thank you so much for talking to us. Always a pleasure. I'm legal practitioner Nibeye F. Young. Thank you.